In order to understand the many lies that have been given to us over time, we must be educated on the truth. A main part of my ministry is to educate so that lies can be truly seen and bondage be broken. Many people are against Christianity for many reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is they don't understand the history behind it. So my next series of videos will be educating my viewers on the history of religion. In an effort to keep the time down, it's just a summary, so if there's something left out or that you don't understand, please leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it if I can. Let's begin. To begin to understand, we need to start with the beginning of major beliefs. This brings us to Mesopotamia, also known as ancient Babylon. You see, most people that talk against Christianity, most of the time will tell you that Christianity stole their beliefs from ancient Egypt. When anyone says this, it shows a clear lack of understanding of the truth and historic fact. First, the Christianity they're referring to is not Christianity, but Roman Catholicism. Two very different things that historic record and simple understanding of doctrine easily proves. Now for those with extensive knowledge, let me just point out that I understand we can go further with all this, all the way to Cain and Abel and the Mark of Cain, but this video is a brief synopsis like I said earlier. My goal of the video is to give a basis and foundation in which anyone else that wants to understand can build from. So. This foundation starts post-flood in the first known civilization, Mesopotamia. The mystery religion of ancient Babylon is the beginning of paganism. This period begins after the great flood that destroyed man. The mystery religion has been told in many different stories through many millenniums. It consists of a lot of names of many different gods that are in fact all actually the same gods. Different cultures, different times, different languages, but all the same story, figures, and structure. This is one reason why people try to include Christianity into this. The problem is, they're just missing key information. Now to clarify and explain in the simplest of terms what the mystery religion of Babylon is, it's simply polytheism and or paganism. You've heard this in school. Polytheism is the belief in many gods. The true knowledge of the goal of these gods was only given to the few. These people were the high priest and priestess that passed down the religions. They required the sacrifice to the gods, and they were the only ones able to commune with the gods. They held the secret knowledge, which gave them power over the ones who did not have the knowledge. If someone knew about the sun and when an eclipse would occur, they would seem as if they could control it. The people would then worship and follow that man. This is a simple explanation, but you should get the point from it. In polytheism, in most cultures, you will see the same structure. One man who was God, one virgin woman, who was the mother of God, and a son of the mother who was impregnated from the male God. There's father God, mother God, and the son of God. And this is what paganism is. It always follows this structure. And this story started in Mesopotamia, ancient Babylon. So here's the story. Let me just mention that this record is not just supported through the Bible, which only covers it very basically, but comes from the very foundation of Freemasonry and many other books. The difference between me and the majority of naysayers, I will cite sources. You'll see a list of them in the description below. So anyone who discredits this information, please make sure you do the same and cite your sources. After the flood, it was Noah's family chosen to repopulate the earth. He had three sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham. The story of paganism comes from the line of Ham. Noah's grandson, Cush, came from the line of Ham. He did the complete opposite of what God commanded. God commanded them to flourish the earth and worship him. Cush became a leader though, bringing people all together to live under him. You can see the lines of Ham, Shem, and Japheth in Genesis chapter 10. You see, a lot of times when reading the Bible, we can often skip over this information. But to understand things, you must follow the bloodlines. That's why it's given to us. So back to the story. Cush promoted pure rebellion against God, leading to the creation and building of the Tower of Babel. They wanted to ascend into heaven and defeat God. They wanted to build a structure that if Yahweh ever decided to flood the earth again, they would be able to live through it. They all spoke in one language and decided rather than move away from each other, they could build a kingdom for their own dominion to challenge God. The Tower of Babel was a very important symbol in the occult world. It illustrates rebellion against God and masculinity. They all look the same, hence the erect building. An example of this would be an obelisk 
like the Washington Monument. The Bible does not explain in detail what was going on with Cush and his followers. All that we know is that he was rebellious and led people to be rebellious as well by building the Tower of Babel. When God came down and saw what it was they were doing, he was not happy. He decided to confuse their languages that no one could understand what either was saying. They were not able to communicate with each other. The building of the tower had stopped. God confused their language, creating the name Babel. Cush was disgraced. So, so far what you should have gained from this after the flood was there are three lines, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We know that Shem's line came to be the line of Israel, King David, and Jesus. We know that from the line of Ham, the rebellion against God began again. Now after Cush, there was Nimrod, Cush's son. Nimrod was a very powerful hunter. He was mighty. He was also very determined to finish the plan his father started. He conquered all animals and then men. He became leader of the Assyrian Babylonian Empire. Nimrod is the beginning of all the stories that have been passed down over the time about the gods that everyone refers to when denouncing Christianity. His story has developed and transformed him into a god. It all starts with him. Following the occult will lead back to him, but still goes further back to Cain. Either way, it's his story that must be understood to understand what the minds of pagans believe. Nimrod communicated with the spirit world, which guided him to complete great accomplishments like the Tower of Babel. He obtained occult knowledge that gave him power over their people. Nimrod started the first world government, where they all practiced the same religion and were governed under him. They performed human sacrifices and he was in control. They worshipped him as God because he outright challenged Yahweh. Nimrod found rebellion only from his uncle Shem, Noah's other son. Shem abhorred the abominations that Nimrod and Cush had done. Shem followed the commands of God. He plotted with other conspirators and killed Nimrod. More than just killed Nimrod, they cut him up in pieces and sent the pieces to all the different cities that were under Nimrod's rule. Shem did this to show that Nimrod was not a god and for the people to stop what they were doing and start worshiping and obeying the god of his father, Noah. His followers were nervous and frightened. It was obvious that Nimrod was not a god and his father was already defeated. They did not know where to go from there. And that's where the next part of the story brings the real twist and connection. The answer actually came from a woman, the whore. But just recapping, the story of Nimrod is very simple to understand. A man in the beginning claiming power over the other people, claiming himself to be God. It's a simple, easy concept to get. The real twist starts, like I said, with the woman. This woman who comes into this picture is Semiramis. Semiramis was the first wife of Cush. She also was the mother of Nimrod. She claimed to be divinely born. After Cush lost power, in order to stay in power, she did the unthinkable thing in our modern opinion. She married her son Nimrod. Then shortly after Nimrod was killed, she became pregnant and found another way to stay in power. She told the people it was the spirit of Nimrod that impregnated her. She claimed she was having a virgin birth from the spirit of Nimrod. Semiramis slept with no man and was impregnated by Nimrod's spirit, she claimed. Nimrod was now a father and Semiramis was the mother. This is the start and the beginning of father and mother god worship. It is the primary driver of polytheism, but most people will never make the actual connection. You see, Semiramis was able to convince Nimrod's followers that her son was the fulfillment of God's prophecy about Jesus in Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. The people believed that her son would be the savior to defeat the serpent. Reality being, it was actually the serpent they'd be worshipping. She managed to convince her followers that Nimrod did not die, but he ascended to the sun. She claimed it was the rays of the sun god, Nimrod, that caused her to conceive. He was now to be worshipped now as Baal, the sun god. She made herself a goddess, claiming that she was divinely created. She was in fact the moon goddess. She had them believe she came down to the earth from the moon in a giant moon egg that fell into the Euphrates River. The Queen of Babylon, aka Madonna, aka Semiramis, became known as the moon goddess Ishtar, which can be pronounced as Easter. And her moon egg became known as Ishtar's egg. 
You know, Christians should really take this into understanding when they falsely celebrate that pagan holiday, Easter. Now, the son's name was Tammuz. He was now the son of God. He was a sun god reborn, and he was born on the winter solstice. This is where you get the Madonna portrait from, where you see the mother god holding the son of God. Later, Tammuz was killed by a wild pig. Semiramis, now Ishtar, said he ascended to the sun like his father, and now are our union. After Nimrod, Semiramis continued on with their worship and sacrifices. But because of Shem and the constant defeat by God, they changed their approach. What was once done out in the open would now be done in secret. All practices driven from Kush and Nimrod, stemming from the channeling of spirits, would now be done in the dark. It would now become a mystery, only completely revealed to those worthy, the high priests and priestesses. Based from the story of Nimrod, the mystery religion was created. This religion spread among the different ancient empires of Babylon, Egypt, Persia, Greece, and Rome. This is what paganism is, the purest definition of it. Paganism is the collection of all polytheistic beliefs centered around a central belief. The stories may change, the names of the gods may change, but there are always three central figures and a very specific structure. The father god, who is the sun god, the mother god, who is the moon goddess, and the son of God, who is the sun god reborn. Depending on what nation or culture you are from, they went by different names, but they all follow the same structure, father god, mother god, and son of God. This chart illustrates the god and goddess worship of the pagans of different cultures, empires, and religions. It can be quite confusing because there are many different names and stories depending on the nation, region, or culture, but this should give you a strong enough example. In Babylon, the sun god or father god was Nimrod, the moon goddess or mother god was Semiramis, and the son of god, the sun god reborn, was Tammuz. In Egypt, the sun god was Ra, the moon goddess was Isis, and the son of god was Horus. In Greece, the sun god was Zeus, the moon goddess was Artemis, and the son of god was Adonis. In Rome, the sun god was Jupiter, the moon goddess was Diana, and the son of God was Apollo. In Nordic culture, that's the Vikings. The sun god is Odin. The moon goddess was Joro, and the son of God is Thor. In Hindu, the sun god was Vishnu. The moon goddess was Chandra, and the son of God was Krishna. In Roman Catholicism, now this is where most of the trouble and deception comes from, because the sun god is what many refer to as God. The moon goddess is the Virgin Mary, and the Son of God is Jesus. Now, this is not to get confused with the true story of Jesus. While we believe in Mary, we do not worship her as a goddess, and we don't refer to her as Mother God. There is only one true God. This is confusion that was put into the world by the Roman Catholic Church, who mixed their pagan gods with the story of Yeshua. I will be doing a video to show the evidence. The main point is though Satan has strategically created the same story, there are significant differences. It's impossible not to see the connection from all the stories of these gods and goddesses. The easiest distinction you'll find when identifying pagan worshipers is they worship both father and mother god. If there is both a masculine and feminine god in the belief system, then they are pagan. And that was and is the predominant belief in the world from the ancient times. This is what religion was founded upon. There were many other gods, but there was always a hierarchy, and this god structure was at the top. This whole belief system was only challenged by the Israelites, who claimed they were in communication and the chosen people of the one true God. The battle of monotheism versus polytheism then became fully in effect. One god versus many gods. Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz were immortalized and then worshipped, their names being different, but underlying point of the story is clear. Now with all these sun gods and moon goddesses, another similarity is that they all were birthed from the same father. This father is the ultimate god. He has told the lie that he is the creator and bearer of light, of knowledge. He is the father god, like referenced earlier. He is the main connection that most people do not make. It's that all these names refer to actually one god, Satan, Lucifer, Baal, many other names. He had many different names in many different cultures. In Babylon, he was Baal. In Egypt, he was Ra. 
In Greece, he was Zeus. In Rome, he was Jupiter. In Hindu, he was Indra. In Israel, he was Molech. He was the founder of these religions and the ultimate hierarchy of the gods. This was the religion, but it all is Lucifer. Satan has both masculine and feminine qualities. The Most High does not. This pagan belief is all directed towards one goal. It was the goal that Cush and Nimrod both had from the beginning when they established the empire. The ultimate goal is rebellion against God. In order to defeat the Most High and have the world worship Baal as the father god, the mother god Ishtar will again have a virgin birth from Baal, birthing the savior, Baal reborn. This will bring about their rule and dominion again on earth. It's the same story over and over. Regardless of the name of the God, the story and the prophecy are the same. This is the ultimate goal and main deception of Satan. This is where paganism starts and the story will not end until their lie is complete. Now you must understand there are plenty that worship Satan as God already, knowing completely in whom they serve. But there is a majority that worship these three gods through other names. This needs to be understood that they are actually worshiping Satan through deception. Many of today's practices and traditions are centered around this deception. You now have a base foundation for stronger understanding and connections. Satan is the master deceiver. This is how he will unite the world to worship him. They already are. They've been doing it in his name through silence and secrecy for thousands of years. He has created many gods and beliefs centered around him that people all around the world accept and worship. People like to go back to the ancient days and refer to spirituality, but what they don't recognize is that these beliefs all center around Satan. It doesn't matter which God it is they choose because if it's not true belief in Jesus Christ, the true one, not the one mixed in with the pagan beliefs, it will lead everyone to Satan. This is the part of the great deception. Like I said, there was only one challenge to the system and structure. There was only one line of people one nation that said there was only one true God and that there was no feminine nature to him either. He was the most high and they had a covenant with him. This one nation was from the line of Shem and this was the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Jacob. Without them, there would be no difference in the story of religion. Watch my next video to understand their part. This video is used to break down all the lies and misconceptions surrounding religion, particularly Christianity. It is not a white man or European religion. It is not something used for control or enslavement, except for those who purposely misuse it. It is in fact paganism, which is used for this very goal of control and enslavement. Paganism is actually a European religion, also an African religion, and many other cultures religion, because it went throughout the whole world. Whenever you hear any religion with that three God structure and many other gods below them, know this is paganism and beware of all the traditions and cultures that surround the worship of them. There are many. A lot of the prophecy matches God's true prophecy of the Messiah through Jesus Christ. Satan, the deceiver, has used God's plans to deceive man. This is what an antichrist is. The basis of the understanding of this information will allow for greater understanding of the traditions the world keeps. It will make you think about what God you actually might be serving without true actualization. The key points to know are, Lucifer is the sun god. The birthday of the sun god is December 25th, around the winter solstice, the time when the sun is closest to the earth. Pagans worship the moon, the moon goddess, goddess Diana, Ishtar, and her many other names. She is the female fertility deity, the virgin mother of God, the whore of Babylon. She is worshipped on Easter to celebrate her return each year. This is just a summary of paganism. It should provoke thought in you to make connections with traditions, beliefs, and customs in your own life and review them, and to grow stronger in your belief of the true Savior, Jesus Christ. Learn about him in the Word of God. I love you all.